Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We are back with Sable's Grimoire. Um, let's see. We made it past the third year, capping off yet. Yeah. We made it, not third year, though. So now we're on the fourth week of school. And a lot has already happened. Um, I'm interested to see why we're in the auditorium. Uh, find myself being summoned to the auditorium. No sooner have I eaten breakfast than am I shuffled along, guided alongside my fellow first year students and their teachers. Nobody seems to have any clue. That's why we're being summoned. And to our disappointment, our teachers refuse to say a word. Just have to wait and see. That's stupid. Bet my father just wants to make some self-serving speech. Just watch you will wave off the rapid decline in students, briefly mention the hunt, and then go off. Uh, don't restart my computer. Wait an hour. Okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Briefly mention the hunt, then go off in his own tangent for half an hour. You really think he enjoys the sound of his own voice that much? I figured the principal just wanted to put everyone at ease, with so many students leaving and everyone feeling anxious about the hunt. It would make sense for him to address the remaining students' concerns. Hmm, you give that man too much credit. No, you're just unnecessarily harsh on your father. Swallowing these words of rebuttal, I look towards the front of the auditorium. The principal, standing up there on his own, as teachers and students slowly gather in front of him. Once we've all stopped moving, the principal opens his mouth. There are at least chairs. <laughs> Everyone, I'd like to thank you all for coming here on such short notice. Just know that the lamps are really cool. I can't tell if they're, they're floating or if it's just like purple mist coming off of them. Their color's purple. Do not tend to keep you from class, and as such, I won't beat around the bush. <clears throat> what I have called you all here to discuss is the recent decline in attendance, and of course, the march for public order. Though N calls the campaign by its proper title, the name on everyone's lips is something quite different. The march for public order, also known as the hunt. See, I can see why they would call it the March for Public Order, because that's what it's meant to be. That's what nobody sees it as. On the day it began to be labeled as such, the campaign lost a considerable amount of credibility. And by this point, barely any students view it in a positive light. I'm ashamed to admit that until the principal corrected my understanding of what the hunt entails. I too saw it as a horrendous program which needed to be abolished. Such is the power of negative publicity and a healthy dose of political spin. Exactly. I'm sure many of you are feeling uneasy right now. A large number of the students in your representative classes have disappeared. They have either dropped out or been asked to leave. However, I'd like to assure you all their departure has nothing to do with the March of Public Order, which is set to begin this weekend. The departing students were not expelled for refusing to participate, nor were poorly performing students asked to leave for the sake of increasing the grade point average. I'm not sure I believe that last part. Every year, students enroll at this academy without fully understanding their duties as students and the pressure that will be placed upon them. Those who are unprepared, we kindly suggest that they leave the academy, such that they may enroll somewhere more suited to their abilities. They are not forced to leave, nor are they threatened or coerced in any way. Coerced? Your classmates left of their own accord. A departure uh, omen, nor is it an indirect ind indication that you should do the same. This happens every year, 
at every magic academy is nothing to be concerned about. Despite the principal's assurance, few students seem to be at ease. If anything, the principal has caused the more obvious, oblivious students to worry as they didn't see the current situation as a problem until in drew attention to it. Nevertheless, the principal's speech continues. That being the case, I feel that it is important for me to address the other matter weighing on most of your minds, namely the March Republic Order, or as it is so often called, the hunt. Students gulp on the other side of me. Whatever the principal is about to say, he better choose his words carefully. I understand that this particular campaign instills fear in the hearts of many. For some, simply hearing that dreadful name is unsettling. However, this is not a duty you need to fear. The march for public order is and always has been a good thing. Any negative publicity it has garnered is undeserved. The march for public order is no different than the human police force or the guardians of your representative villages and homelands. The March for Public Order started as a means for demi-humans to govern themselves. It was intended to allow us to support each other and to aid one another in negative in navigating our way around this foreign society. Without the March for Public Order, there's no telling what manner of unlawful and prejust uh, judge just treatment we might have been subjected to it is our it is our means by which to take control of our own fate to carve our own future in human society in spite of the principal's impassioned declaration his words don't seem to be getting through to the students before him for all of the emotion in his voice, and fails to actually explain how the students participate of the hunt is wrong and why it's a good thing. His only valid point seems to be that demi-humans should want to remain in control of their own govern governance. However, he fails to capitalize on that point and quickly loses the students' interests. I feel sorry for the principal. Even if he did explain the true nature of the mark properly, people have already ingrained it, uh, its other name and the associated stigma into their hearts. They are willfully oblivious to the truth, short of seeing the duties of the hunt's participants for themselves. Most of these students will not change their views. In accordance with this noble duty, Every year, we ask for volunteers to join the March for Public Order without regard for their grade. While participating among first-year students is always low, I'm proud, nevertheless, to introduce you all to your grade's volunteers. Everyone, please give a round of applause to your new guardians as they join me out here and introduce themselves. Hearing the principal's command, I turn to look at the Shah. By the time I spot her, the Shah is already nearing the front of the auditorium. Either she knew ahead of time that her father would call her out, or she's even, or she's every bit as quick-witted as she claims to be. Whatever the case, this is pretty awkward. The principal called for applause, yet all the attention the Shah and the others are getting seems to be negative. Paying no mind to the lackluster representative, he retains his joyful attitude. He welcomes the three students, the Shah, Norm, and a girl whom I never met, then turns towards the rest of us once more. Starting this weekend, these fine young men and women will be participating in the March for Public Order as representatives of Andromeda's first-year students. It takes great courage to step forward like this, partially as new students, so I hope that you will all show your representatives the compassion and respect they deserve. As end speech comes to a close, we are all escorted to our re respective classrooms. Only those who were asked to introduce themselves remain behind, no doubt to discuss matters pertaining to their new duties. For the rest of us, class will continue as normal. Hi, hi, morning, or at least relatively normal. Good morning, girls. What brings you to my classroom this morning? Get lost on your way to the cafeteria. <laughs> I gotta forget where the cafeteria is. 
Ray doesn't need to remember. She just follows her nose. Yeah, stupid Sable. Why are you responding to my rice cracks so seriously? And besides, last time I checked, the stupid ones here were... Oh, she's now last place because all the other people have been leaving. My eyes widen as I look at Ray's profile, which seems to have changed since I last read it. Your student profile. That's right, I'll be joining your class from now on. Me too. Uh, I see how it is. With so many students leaving, the principal must have decided to dissolve a couple of our classes. It certainly makes sense from an administrative point of view. There's nothing to gain by having six classes, and you barely have enough students to fill four. I see. So you two will be joining class 1C, huh? That's right. Alright then. I just have one question. Yeah, what is it? I bring Ray's profile up once more and show it to her. Ah. Are you still here? You were near the bottom of our grade to begin with, now you're dead last. Did the principal not ask you to leave? I'm in last place? Whoa, rock bottom. You know what that means. That you're one step away from expulsion? Nope. Means that my rank can only go up from here. That's certainly one way of looking at it. Ray is so dumb. I wouldn't be snickering if I were you, F. <laughs> now that the students below and between the two of you are gone, you're in second last place. 110 of 19. She's not that last place. You're a prime candidate for expulsion yourself. No, you know what? I'm honestly curious how the heck are you two still here? Do you at least have a meeting with the principal to discuss your future at the academy? Mm. Is that what that meeting was supposed to be about? My teacher did say something about staying after class with a bunch of other students to meet with the principal. But I was bored and hungry, so I left class early. You avoided expulsion by skipping class. Ray, you are just the antithesis of my entire being. What about you, Eth? What's your excuse? I got left behind. Left behind? What do you mean? Our teacher and the other students, we all started walking to the principal's office together. But they were too fast for me. I lost sight of them around the first corner. Unbelievable. You were both saved by your own worst qualities. He, I know, right? It's good to take things slowly. I prepared a retort, but instead I wound up sighing as I slumped over my desk. The two stragglers before me are beyond help. Scolding them won't accomplish anything. Whatever, just do as you please. That's the plan. Exhausted by my brief conversation with Eth and Ray, I close my eyes and rest my head, my forehead on my desk. Even though our new teacher, the former teacher of Class 1E, I presume, is present, the lesson is yet to start. It was the 1E, was that that old adventurer guy when we did the two classes together? Furthermore, my classmates are all chatting amongst themselves, and there isn't an ounce of order or productivity to be seen. I think that was 1D. That's where Dragon is. <gasps> Oof. Or something like that. Unbelievable. My class has become even more rowdy and unfocused than it was before. I wish the saw was the Shah was here. Right now, I seem to be the only one in this room with any intention of studying. Maybe I should just do my own thing, too. I don't need to wait for the teacher to get their act together in order to be productive. So, I'm gonna talk to the classmates. I think, because I'm not too interested in history of man and elf. If I remember correctly, the other two spin-offs, there's one that's man and elf. And then there's the other one that I'm pretty sure it's Draken. So I'm gonna uh, talk to classmates. Because there's plenty of time to do History of Man and Elf through, you know, rerunning through the game to get different endings and whatnot. Which we'll see how that works out. 
I suppose it wouldn't kill me to get to know my new classmates better. The Shah is going to be busy dealing with matters pertaining to the hunt from now on. So it's probably for the best. I start familiarizing myself with other students in my class. I reluctantly remove my forehead from my desk and turn towards Ray and Eth. The moment I do so, I see one other head pop up next to us. I'm gonna guess Hell, because that's the only other person who, well, maybe Draken, but I'm pretty sure she's still in a different class. So I'm gonna say Hell. Hell? Yeah. Oh my, what do we have here? Two beautiful young damsels have seen fit to grace this classroom of ours with their presence. To what do we owe this unexpected pleasure, dear maidens? Face with house. Standard greeting. Ray and Eth look at one another in confusion. Uh, I think he's talking to you, Eth. No, he's definitely hitting on you, Ray. Aha, my adorable kittens. I'm of course talking to you both. Poor things. Are you unaware of your own beauty? What? Hmm? Ray and Eth are both overcome in an instant. Without even putting up a fight, they immediately fall victim to Hell's illusion. I have no doubt that Hell could do whatever she wants to them right now, and they wouldn't have the presence of mind to resist. Wait a second. When I think about it like that, isn't this kind of bad? With that thought in mind, I watch over the trio closely, such that I may break the illusion if things get out of hand. Now, my little cuties, how do you feel? Have you allowed my love to enter your hearts? Yes, I can feel it. I can feel your love inside of me. <laughs> Ooh, perfect. And you, my twin cruel beauty. Me too. My heart is warm and fuzzy. Do they even have hearts? Excellent, excellent. Now then, fair maidens, I beseech you, escort me to the infirmary such that we may get better acquainted. Taken aback by hell's forwardness, I blink a few times in surprise. I really just asked those two what I think she did. I was right to monitor these three. I need to put an end to this before. Why wait until we reach the infirmary? Here is good enough. Huh? Uh, wait. What? Uh, come here, my prince. You won't get away from me this time. Prince, what are you? Oh, wait a second. I remember you. And it appears on Hal's expressionless face as memories of Ray's surface within her mind. Within her mind, it seems the hot blonde human boy who Ray bragged about flirting with on her first day at the academy was Hal, after all. I don't know who I feel sorry for: Ray, who thinks Hal is a human male, or Hal, whose illusions have just backfired. If you can call getting exactly what she wanted backfiring, that is. <laughs> Let's not waste any time, my prince. I'm going to show you, show every student in the classroom what it means to be in love. Stop that. Where are you touching me? <laughs> That's not oh. an uncharacteristic feminine shriek escapes from Hal's lips as Ray licks her face. In a shockingly bold manner, Ray pins Hal to the floor, wraps her, rec her neck around Hal's body, proceeds as she sees fit. What are you doing, Ray? Stop that right now. Hal looks up, filled with hope, as Eth threatens to intervene. My love, my love, yes, tear this vile woman away from me. Do not allow her to come between us like this. My thoughts exactly. Hal breathes a sigh of relief as Eth lowers her body and grabs onto Ray's neck. Ray, move aside. You're taking up too much room. I can't join in like this. Oh, right. Here you go. Appreciated. Oh! Uh, hell's surprise. Ray happily creates speth space for Eth to join in. In that instant, the construction on Hell's body effectively doubles, crushing any hope she has of escaping. You've really done it this time, Hell. Two girls are all over you, and they don't even mind sharing. Aren't you lucky? What part of this looks lucky to you? Please, just help me already. I'm dying here. Lacking her usual calm, suave, charismatic manner, Hal desperately cries out for assistance. Ah. Unfortunately for Hal, I have no intention of getting between her and the two fanatical girls whom she charmed. Yeah, I mean, it's your own fault. So 
Sorry, Hal. No can do. Your illusion's your problem. If you don't like the situation of your own creation, then break the illusion. Oh. Too distressed to think clearly, it isn't until I state the obvious that Hal finally dispels the illusion she has cast. Soon afterwards, Eth and Ray let go of her, evidently embarrassed by their behavior. Eesh, what I got into me just now. It's like all of a sudden I lost control of my body. Hmm, me too. How scary. Scary as ones here are you two. I like forcefully I like forceful women as much as the next person, but you two are just too much. Honestly, I pity whoever falls victim to either one of you. Free once more, Hal storms off, utterly bare fit of her usual composure. Even Ray and Eth hesitate to say anything else. Instead, they return to their seats and wait red-faced for the lesson to begin. Unbelievable. This is a perfect example of why you should be careful what you wish for. I only hope that those three have learned their lesson and won't be disruptive from this point on. Though, honestly, I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. The moment I finish that thought, noise once again begins to fill the classroom. I wonder what position Hal's in on the... Uh, student ranking. Okay, I wish I could look at my student ranking and whatnot. <laughs> All of my classmates are starting towards the front of the room, chatting amongst themselves as something catches their eyes. Uh oh. Following their line of sight, I soon understand the reason for the commotion. The Shah whose father asked her and the other first year's participants of the hunt to stay behind has finally arrived. Ah, the traitor is back. Look, it's the traitor. Watch out, she'll come after you if you aren't careful. No hunting us down. What kind of sick joke is this? Daddy's girl has probably been participating in the hunt for a century now. Disgusting. Why do we have to be in the same classroom as a traitor like her? Wow. She should be segregated. What the fuck? How are we supposed to feel safe while she's here? Wow. Moment after the shot enters the classroom, the sound of discontent discontentment becomes deafening. For every from every direction, students are bad mouthing the shot, calling her a traitor for agreeing to participate in the hunt. The shot glares at them, but ultimate, ultimately chooses to stay silent. She likely knew from the beginning that her classmates would react in this manner and prepared herself for such a rec re ooh, re re reception as soon as she entered the room. In her eyes, they are merely fools who cannot comprehend the true value of the hunt, or rather the reason why the march for public order is so important. What's with the sudden change of mood? Everyone seems either spooked or angry. The hunter is here. The hunter. Eth hesitantly points towards the saw. The hunter. Oh, you mean the elf bull who joined the hunt, yeah? That is kind of a bummer. Who would have thought we'd be put in a class with someone like her? Come on, guys. Don't be like that. Lashaw is a nice person. Once you get to know her. And you get used to her sarcasm. And you build up a tolerance to the hurtful things she says. Are you sure she is a nice person? You aren't making it sound that way. How could she possibly be a nice person? She's a hunter. So what? That doesn't mean she's automatically a bad person. Of course it does. Hunters are evil, merciless people who deserve nothing but hate. Wow. Surprised by S's strong reaction, Ray and I glance at one another for a moment. In reaction to our mention of hunters, the soft spoke, slow paced uh, Mandra, whom we both befriended, has finally started to show her thorns. I don't know what kind of experience Eth has had with participants in the hunt. Or actual hunters, for that matter. But whatever she's experienced, I'm not too keen to find out. I know how you feel, Eth, but isn't that a bit much? From what the principal said, they're more like demi-human cops than hunters. Isn't it a good thing for students here to gain power over humans? Why? He just wants to recruit people to his cause. The principal is a bad man. Come on, Eth. Just because someone joined the hunt 
That doesn't mean they're a bad person. What if Ray and I joined the hunt? Would you suddenly hate us unconditionally? That's... You wouldn't do that. But what if we did? Would you no longer want to be around us, Seth? That's, that's different. You're my friends. I know you aren't bad people. Even if we joined the hunt, even if that happened, I'd still want to be friends. I breathe a sigh of relief as Eth elaborates on her position. She may be angry and disappointed at the moment, but she's still rational. Eth realizes herself that she isn't the type to abandon her friends, even if they do something she doesn't like. Glad to hear that, Eth. I wouldn't want you to start hating me over something like that, but if that's how you feel, then don't you already understand that hunters aren't necessarily bad people after all. The only difference between us and the first year students who signed up is that you befriended us ahead of time. You could have just as easily become their friend before they joined in which case, stop talking. I know what you want to say Sable, but that doesn't change how I feel. I hate hunters, all of them, elves, humans, every single one of them. Eth turns away from Ray and I, putting an abrupt end to our conversation. She even goes as far as to move several seats away, making it difficult for either one of us to call out to her without adding to the chaos in the classroom. <laughs> Acting more stubborn than I've ever known her to be, Eth makes her position on the matter clear and refuses to be persuaded. I've never seen Eth act like that before. She's usually so mellow, takes everything at a slow and easy pace. I didn't realize that a plant like her could even act hot-blooded. You shouldn't be too surprised. I know that the two of you became close friends quickly, but even so, the fact remains that you just only met a few weeks ago. Even if that was enough time for the two of you to become friends, you're still a long way off of actually knowing one another in any meaningful capacity. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. I wanted to make Eth feel better, but instead all I did was make her mad. I wouldn't worry about Eth too much. She's angry at the first years who joined the hunt, not us. Let's give her some space. I'm sure she'll be back to normal in no time. Yeah. Unless this is normal for her. Excuse me? You said it yourself, Sable. What do we really know about Eth? You and I know everything about one another, but when it comes to Eth, what do we actually know about her? You know everything about me. Yeah, want to see my impression of you? Er, Sable. Big dumb nerd who obsessed with demi humans. I'm surrounded by pretty girls, but I'm too much of a wuss to make a move on them. I think I'm a mad scientist protagonist whose personality flaws are cool, but I'm actually just a sleep deprived and mal malnourished dummy who wants to be a magic researcher. So that's how you see me, huh? Fine then, get a load of this. Hi, I'm Ray. I'm a simple-minded glutton who deserves nothing, who does nothing but eat, sleep, and make fun of people who are more motivated than I am. I call myself a demi-human, but I'm basically just a normal human being with a stretchy neck. I never think anything through, and the only part of my body I listen to is my stomach. I only came to the academy so that my parents would get off my back. The truth is, I have no intention of studying or even graduating. I just want to have fun forever. That is fucked. Like, hers was bad, but Sable, yours is like two times worse, in my opinion. I smirk triumphantly as I finish my impression of Ray. Ray stares at me quizzically, seemingly undecided on how she feels about what she just heard. How do you like that, Ray? Do you still think that we know everything about one another? Hmm. Not bad, Sable. Not bad. Your voice wasn't quite as feminine as mine, but your observatives were spot on. I'm glad you're like that, Ray, because, man, he went just a tad too far on that one. You admit that I was correct? Totally. It's just like I said, the two of us really are on the same wavelength. But let's be super serious for a second. Even we're both predictable and two-dimensional, the same doesn't necessarily apply to Eth. She probably has all kinds of emotions and morals and junk. She might even have a well-defined personality forged through genuine hardship. Compared to secondary characters and supporting cast members like us, she's a completely different beast altogether. I can't even begin to tell you all the things wrong with what you just said. But I'll overlook it just this once. F situation takes precedence here. Ooh, I want to keep getting along with F. 
However, I also don't want to stop conversing with Lasha, even if she joined the hunt. I think I was right about Eth just needing some time to cool off, or is this a bigger deal than I made it out to be? Mm, that's a tricky one. If I could accurately predict Eth's reaction, we wouldn't be in this mess. Even though I'm more similar to Eth than a full-blooded human like yourself might claim to be, I don't understand her all that well. This may come as a shock to you, but the truth is I've never once been discriminated against because of my race, especially not That doesn't surprise me one bit. Your talent for magic is woeful, and you claim to fame as a demi-human is a stretchy neck. Honestly, most people would probably consider you to be more human than I am. Alright, smarty pants, you made your point. What I'm trying to say is I actually have no idea how Eth feels, or what she thinks when stuff like this comes up. So even if the two of us sit here wondering about her, we probably aren't going to get anywhere. We're ultimately just too different. As surprised as I am to hear Ray say so herself, I already suspected that her life until now was the refit of conflict. While Ray may technically be a demi-human, she's not even close to being in the same league as Eth. Ray could easily live out her entire life in a human city pretending to be a normal human being. In fact, that's probably what she's been doing until now. So, we're at half an hour mark. Um, I kind of want to keep going until I make it to, I don't know, like a sign of like what route I'm going down. Because at the moment, it feels like I'm not getting anywhere. I feel like I made a wrong decision somewhere. Maybe, because I'm not seeing a lot of dragon, and I really like dragon. So I have no idea. We'll have to see where we get, I guess. For being with S traits and genetic makeup, on the other hand, living amongst humans, especially while remaining incognito, would likely prove impossible. Eth is not a human being. Furthermore, the difference between her and humans are not easy to bridge. Despite all of our similarities, there will always be matters of which we will never see eye to eye. By the time classes come to the end, uh, order is still yet to be restored. The Shah is isolated, Eth is fuming, Ray is at a loss for what to do, and the rest of the classmates are either angry or uneasy. Eager to escape this atmosphere, I hastily make my way to the student dorms. With all of the other students either in class or eating in the cafeteria, the dorms are empty, offering me a moment of silent comp compilation as I hope for a break from this awful situation. Oh, I wonder about ticks. Maybe I'll end up going down that room. Damn it, N. What the hell were you thinking? There was already a big enough gap between Lasha and our classmates. As it was, now she's practically a mortar. And why now? Why when we're in the middle of merging classes and reeling from a massive loss in number, would he introduce this kind of unnecessary drama? I can't understand that man's thought process one bit. So I think he did it. Like trimming weeds? You know what I mean? Like, he's like, we'll just see who. Well, I don't know, because it seems like everybody hates him. So it feels like anyone who even makes it to the third year is just forced to participate. I don't know. I, I guess I can't understand why he did it. Still unsettled by everything that has happened, I enter my dorm room with a clouded mind. All I can think about is the scene from my classroom and my inability to do a thing about it. No matter how much I think this is over, I just can't seem to find a path forward, which I find satisfactory. Hell, I can't even convince myself that I haven't already screwed up royally. Should I have changed seats and sat down next to Lasha? Lasha doesn't seem like the kind of person to need reassurance. But it would have been a nice gesture if nothing else. See, I would have done that. Because it's like, yeah, I like Ray and F. But it's like, I like Lashaw more. Because she just fits 
personality more? I don't know. But if I had done that, how would Eth have reacted? She seemed pretty distraught just seeing the Shah's face. I can't imagine what would have gone through her head. If I left her side, in order to sit next to the Shah instead. Well, she already left your side, unless if she moved back. I don't know. It's, it's a hard one. I sit down on the edge of my bed, then lower my torso, or torso onto the blanket. This break isn't long enough for a nap, but at the very least I ought to be able to rest for a short while. Maybe this is just one of those situations where there is no right answer. I already turned down the principal's offer to join the hunt. So in a way, I suppose I've already made my choice, but even then, I don't want to pick a side. Or fellow any of the choices in this matter. Vilify. I think that means make them evil. But it's so, it's such a hard... I don't know, because it's hard to understand from, you know, my point of view, because we don't have demi-humans just being, like, straight up hunted, you know, it's like we already just have regular cops, you know, so it's not like, uh, you know, a minority group like Mexicans or, you know, black people, they're not being, like, picked, like, hey, you need to basically hunt, you know, I don't want to say your own kind, but that's just the only word I can think of. Um, let's go with tribe. Your own tribe. You know, like basically your people. Yeah. I don't know. It is simply not possible for everyone to just get along. The moment I close my eyes, a familiar ringing sound reaches my ears. It seems that all too soon, the break between classes has come to an end. Whether I'm prepared to do so or not, I'll now be expected to return to the uh, oppressive atmosphere of my now divided class. It gives me a choice. I want to sit next to the Shah. Unsurprisingly, the atmosphere in my classroom hasn't changed significantly since the previous lesson. While a few students appear to have regained their calm, the majority are silent or whispering amongst themselves quietly. Furthermore, even by the time class is supposed to have begun, several students are absent. Given the current state of the class, chances are that they're skipping this lesson in order to avoid any unnecessary drama. And yet, as far as I can tell, those most affected by the current situation seem to be present. The Shaw and Eth both showed up after all. Given the Shaw's stubborn nature, I'm not surprised that she decided to come, but as for Eth, Eth appears to be glaring at the back of the Shah's head with all her might, showing more contempt than I thought possible from her. For her. Rather than back down and avoid this awkward situation, it seems as though Eth has decided to stand her ground. At least they aren't fighting. No matter how hard Eth tries, it's not like she can actually bear a hole in the back of the Shah's head with her eyes. No kidding. If Eth didn't hate moving around so much, I'm sure she would have gone over there to confront the elf girl by now. The second I voice my complaint, Ray appears by my side as though manifesting out of thin air. You're clinging to my side the moment I walk through the door, Ray. Careful. Keep acting like that. People are gonna get the wrong idea about us. You're right. I hadn't thought about that. It wasn't a problem with Eth, but with the two of us, a boy and a girl who both look human, rumors are sure to spread like wildfire. I don't just look human, Ray. I am human. Anyway, it was only a joke. I just wanted to point out that you were sticking with me instead of Eth for once. I don't know why I did that. Can you blame me? Eth's no fun the way she is now. I get that she's mad about this hunt thing, but I think she's taking it a bit harder than necessary. At any rate, Eth and I are going through a temporary separation until she's back to normal. You're my new best friend. What did you just say? I said you're my new best friend, Sable? No, no, this can't be. 
You know what that means, right? We sit together in class, eat together in the cafeteria. Oh, and because your allowance is higher than mine, you have to share your food with me. The best friend of a collegiate dunce, a girl who sleeps through every class, and whose own truancy saved her from expulsion. Since our dorm rooms are right next to each other, we stay up chatting, and maybe have sleepovers too. My studies, my grades, my privacy. I can feel everything that I've been striving for being taken away from me. Hey, are you listening to me? Hello, Earth Disable. I can't let that happen. I have to do something about this before it's too late. I leave Ray's side and make my way over to F, still glaring at the back of the Shaw's head. F doesn't look at me. As I approach, she remains completely stationary, fixated on her target. Nevertheless, I make my move. Hello again, F. Ready for another exciting lesson with your new classmates. Feeling lethargic, you can always move to the back of the room where there's plenty of sunlight. Man, it sh must be awesome to be able to phone to synthesize, huh? You know, I heard a rumor that you and Ray are more than just friends. Is it true? I'd hate to get between the two of you unintentionally. Go away, Sable. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I give up without a fight, as Eth ignores every one of my attempts to start a conversation. Fortunately, it seems Eth is in no mood for the kind of silly banter she usually enjoys. See, I told you, it's not. It's like she's a completely different person. Yep, no argument here. Is giving Eth time to short out her feelings really all we can do? It sucks to feel powerless, doesn't it? No matter how much you want to help, you know that anything you try will only make matters worse. But don't worry, you'll get used to it. I know I am. Let's just keep doing what we always do. And when Eth decides she's had enough of pouting by herself, she'll come right back to us. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, I didn't expect this one. As Talks to the Hunt continues to permeate through the academy, rifts begin to form amongst the first year students. I wonder if we're gonna have like a tiny time skip. Whether one is participating in the hunt, a supporter, a protester, as a campaign, or someone who just doesn't feel strong in either way, there's no escaping the drama. Extremists from both factions push others into picking sides, either bullying or guilt tripping them until they stop sitting on the fence. Uh, arguments break out frequently, often promoting intervention from teachers before matters can escalate. More than a few students are sent to the principal's office. As he wished, his impassable plea has stirred up the emotions of the students and made them think about the hunt far more than they usually would. Unfortunately, even the principal himself could not have predicted the anti mugenous ant agonism that has followed. I'm just gonna say anarchy. <laughs> it's giving me these hard words. <laughs> Being mean to me is what it is. The first class of the day is about to begin. I make my way to the surprisingly quiet classroom and sit beside my bemused friends. See, why am I not Ooh, sitting next to the Shah? That's the real question. Eth has a scowl on her face, as she often seems to lately. Whereas Ray appears to just be plain bored. Sable, do something funny. Class hasn't even started yet, and I'm already falling asleep. How many times do I have to tell you, Ray? I'm not your personal gesture. I take it this means Eth is still not talking to you. She's talking, but it's all just grumbling and complaining. All she says is, hunt this traitor that. I get Eth, you made it clear how you feel. Now can we get back to enjoying life again? Eth doesn't respond. Never mind, I guess it's back to the silent treatment. Why does everyone have to be so wrapped up in this nonsense? I just want everything to go back to how it was before. So do I. Fortunately, I don't think that's gonna happen. Fence sitters like us are the minority. Most of the students in our grades seem to feel quite strongly about all of this. I'd say that'd be a while before life returns to normal. That's no good. 
I don't want Eth to stay like this any longer. Sable, you try talking to her. Me? What do you think I can do? You're her best friend. If you can't get through to her, what makes you think I can? I don't know. Just give it a shot, okay? Even if it doesn't work, it can't hurt. I don't know. Come on. All I'm asking you to do is talk to her. Put that big old brain of yours to good use for once and help a girl out, would you? This is a good use of brain power, but studying isn't. <laughs> Fine. I'll give it a shot. Don't get your hopes up, though. You'll be fine. I believe in you, Sable. Even if you fail, I'll still welcome you back with open arms. Somehow, that doesn't fill me with confidence. I get up and walk past Ray, then take a seat next to Eth instead. Eth doesn't move or acknowledge my presence in any way. Even as I closer to her once again, Eth's gaze is fixed squarely on the back of the Shah's head. Back to staring at the Shah, huh? Well, whatever. Float your boat. If you want to stare at her valedictorian all day, I won't stop you. I don't want to stare at her. I have to. Surprisingly, Eth responds to my half-assed provocation immediately. Rather than dwell on my good fortune, I continue to press on. I do not want you to restart. Leave me alone. <laughs> Go away. You have to, how so? The last time I checked, people can't force you to go wound your classmates all day. Eth shakes her head from side to side. I'm not magooing the elf, I'm monitoring. Monter, monitoring, monitoring her. What's the difference? Intent. Eth sharpens her glare as she focuses on the shy even more so than before. The hunter must be monitored, otherwise she might do something dangerous. Wow. You really think that the top student in our grade is going to lash out or hurt someone? It's possible. She's a hunter, after all. So all hunters are dangerous beings who might explode at any moment, is that it? Fine then, keep glaring at her. It's not like you're staring at the Shaw is going to have any effect on her anyway. You're right, even if I monitor her, nothing will change. I need to be proactive. Oh god. What did I do? Wait, proactive? No, that's not what I'm saying. Eth, where are you going? Don't do anything rash. Spurred on by my words, Eth gets up from her seat and walks to the front of the classroom. She then approaches the Shah, who is sitting all by herself and looks down at the seated elf. The Shah cocks her head as she notices Eth's presence. Yes? What is it? If you have something to say, be quick about it. Class will begin any moment now. Not at all inter intimidated by the fierce expression on Eth's face, the Shah responds while maintaining her usual con contentness. Mustering her resolve, Eth summons the courage required to approach her classmate, the fearsome hunter, and tell the Shah what's on her mind. You're, you're a hunter. Yes, that's right. What of it? You make me mad. Joining those people, turning against us, you're a bad person. Yes, yes, I'm an evil being who deserves punishment. Is that all you wanted to say? If so, I suggest you return to your seat now. In spite of Eth's attempt at confronting the Shah, the stoic elf maintains her calm and barely reacts at all. For better or worse, it seems she's already become used to this sort of treatment. Unfortunately, the Shah's calm demeanor only serves to frustrate Eth, who stands her ground and continues to glare at the Shah. So I'm not surprised that the Shah takes it in stride easily. You're you you're you said your peace, child. I don't need to hear any more. Now why don't you go back to your friends and brag about how you stood up to the evil elf? If one of us should go, it's you. You're the traitor. You should leave. Sit down, foolish girl, before I before you what? Hunt me down too? This is the classroom isn't made for people like you. Get out, traitor. Let me get this straight. You disagree with my life choices. And because of that, you now expect me to heed your command and to get out of your sight. Forget it. I'm staying right here. If you want to get rid of me, you'll have to use more than mere words. Eth and the Shah both go quiet as they continue to glare at one another. Neither one of them seems to have any intention of moving, nor do they wish to concede to the other's will. 
eth confrontation is quickly turned into a war of attrition. On one side, the arrogant, self-assured elf. On the other side, a girl who is genetically predisposed to standing perfectly still for great lengths of time. I don't know. I mean, the Shah is an elf, and they're proud. They always are in fantasies. The way things are going, this might very well be decided by who can go the longest without food and water. Yeah, you tell her, plant girl. That's right, give that traitor what she has come into her. Huh? Go, Greenie. Kick that pompous elf's ass. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Vic that bitch already. Um, that's a bit... Come on, what are you waiting for? Get lost, Hunter. Your kind isn't welcome here. Kick her out, kick her out, kick her out. So this is your plan, is it? You sink the game up on me knowing that you cannot take me on alone. No, I was just going to... I wasn't going to do anything like that. I just wanted to... Don't back down now, plant girl. Kick her ass. Yeah, we've got your back. Even if she's an elf, she can't take all of us on. Go ahead and try it. I dare you. No, this isn't what I want. Our classmates continue to hurl insults. Insinuate violence as Eth quickly loses her confidence. What started as a simple decoration of disapproval has rapidly escalated into a scene where a fight might break out at any moment. Say, well, what should we do? Those two fight, Eth's going to get herself killed for sure. I don't think Eth plans on fighting anyone. She's shaking just standing there. Even so, you're right. We need to put a stop to this before this gets any more out of control. What are you going to do? Even if you know those two, they aren't exactly in stable frames of mind right now. If you aren't careful, you'll get hurt as well. It won't come to that. Our classmates are the ones who want violence, not those two. I'll settle this with words. Just you watch. Be careful. I leave Ray's side and head to the front of the classroom where the two of my classmates are facing off. Positioning myself between the two, I draw their attention without difficulty as I turn to face them, one after the other. Alright, you two, that's enough. There's no need for violence. Let's just return to our seats and wait for the lesson to begin, okay? Tell that to her. I haven't moved an inch since this girl's first approached me. Sable, I didn't mean to. I know, Eth. You didn't mean for this to happen. You too, Lasha. You've some great restraint and maturity by now by not allowing yourself to get swept away by all of this. Of course. Did you expect anything less from me? Not at all. I'm well aware of how patient and forgiving you are. Eth, let's return to our seats and leave the thought in peace, okay? I think you've made your intents clear by now. Yes, you're right. Let's go back. The situation is diffused with great haste, as the two girls both agree to return to the way things were before. I, expect as, I expected as much. At the same time, I relieved, even knowing those two as well as I do. There was always a chance that one of them would react in an unexpected manner. Thankfully, that's not the case. Lasha sits back down, and Eth by my side begins to walk with me back to our seats, until we are forcibly stopped. Figures of plant wouldn't have the spine to finish what she started. Even with all of us backing you up, you still gave up just like that. What a coward. A handful of students block our path. As Eth and I attempt to return to our seats, despite the fact that Lashaw is their target, it seems they have instead chosen to make an example of Eth, who failed to follow through with their threats. Get back down there, Greenie. Show that elf what you're made of. Yeah, don't let the human manipulate you. Can't you see what he's doing? Humans are the enemy. You're even worse than those warmongering elves. Don't let yourself be saved by this man. The, the enemy? No, Sable isn't like that. He's just... Don't kid yourself, all humans are evil. If it weren't for them, the hunt wouldn't exi exist to begin with. That's right, don't forget the whole reason the hunt exists in the first place. So that humans can oppress us. Hey, maybe we should start with the human instead of the elf. What do you guys think? Dangerous thoughts begin to spill out of the mouths of a small group of students as they seize, uh, size up Eth and I. Gang mentality has clearly begun to take over the classroom. You know what? I think you might be onto something there. Humans are the ones turning us against ourselves after all. Right, right, we're all victims of their manipulation. Humans are to blame, not us. Let's make an example out of this one, so the other humans know what they're in for. <laughs> Try it, bitches. Fucking use that fire shield spell. Well, I still have that bracelet. 
I have a half dragon friend to <laughs> kick your ass. <laughs> I unconsciously take a step back as the students move towards me. While I do feel confident that I could take these students on, even with this infernal bangle on my wrist, I have no, no desire to fight anyone or to add to the drama. But with my own classmates turning against me, do I really have a say in the matter? These students aren't going to listen to me, of all people, so reasoning with them is likely out. My only option right now, very well to be, Enough of this. If you're itching for a fight so badly, then I'll gladly be your opponent. Shaw. The students halt their advances as their previous target suddenly cuts in. The Shaw glares at the students without mercy, prepared at any moment to make good on her offer. It figures that you'd protect the human. Yeah, hunters gotta stick together, huh? How pathetic. Is it any more pathetic than you all ganging up on one person? A person who has shown no malice whatsoever towards any of you, and instead attempted to maintain order in this classroom. If you ask me, you cowards are the ones who ought to leave this classroom and never return. What did you say? Cocky bitch. You think that you can just say whatever you want because you're the principal's daughter? No, I can say what I want because none of you have the guts to stop me. Care to prove me wrong? arrogant little. Rather than reason with the angry students, Lashaw causes them to back down by putting them in their place. Well, I don't condone her methods. I can't argue with the results. Now, if you're all finished acting like children, Sable and I will be taking our leave. Reflect on your actions while we are gone. When we return, I expect you all to behave like reasonable, sensible beings. You think you can manage that? Damn it. Giving us orders, bloody elf. I'll take that as a yes. Come now, Sable. Let us waste no further time on these cretins. As indicated, Lashaw turns towards the door and casually makes her exit. After casting a fleeting glance towards Eth, who has shied away from all the conflict, and Ray, who is watching on nervously, I follow Lashaw out into the hallway. Walking a few steps behind Lashaw, I quick I quietly follow her around a few corners as we leave our classroom behind. Once we're a fair distance away, Lashaw breathes a sigh of relief. She stops walking, rests her back against the wall, and closes her eyes. Lashaw, are you alright? I know that you like to act as though you're invincible, but if you need to confide in someone, you have to have to hear you out. Save your concern for someone who needs it. I am simply tired, that's all. Dealing with those fools has soured my mood more than I would care to admit. Because of how they see you, hardly. Why would I care what those plebeians think? Whether they look upon me fondly or not is irrelevant. Well, what would I really think of you? You have at least one ally in our class. Even the rest of our class turns against you. I'll still like you, Lasha. Insolent human, what do you think you're saying? Remarks like that are the reason why those simpletons lump us together and target you in the first place. For your own safety, you would be better off not hanging around me anymore. Next time something like that happens, leave me alone. I'm quite capable of fending for myself. Lasha, you know I'm not going to do that. Even if it makes things awkward, now that everyone is so highly strung about this hunt drama, I'm not going to abandon you. Well, we'll get through this ordeal. Don't you worry. And if it ever seems like it's all too much, remember that you can always confide in me, okay? I'm not going to need your help. I can take care of myself. Even so, I shan't forget your offer. If there comes a time when I am in need of assistance, I will not hesitate to contact you. Oh, I think I'm going to end it there. We're at the hour mark. It's a good time to end it. I have other stuff I want to do today. I want to restart um, Elden Ring. Because I feel like I messed my character up. And I know you can reset it after beating the second boss. Or so I've been told. But it's like I haven't beat the first like main story bar boss yet. I only fought him once. And he like completely kicked my ass. So Yeah, but you know, I'm going to end the episode here at the hour mark. Uh, see you all in the next episode.